Nobody's waiting for me. Okay, we got Are you so uh... Okay, who is Matt V? Emma Madison? Is that you? I'm here. No, no, are you is your thing listed as Mad V? Oh, that's me, sorry. That's no, no, my that's, I'm on my no, phone. No. That's... <laughs> That's fine. I don't really care. I just want to, I just want to make sure everybody's here that's supposed to be here. That's all. Okay. I don't want to have any pornography magically appear on the screen. Okay. No, no, it's me on my phone. All right. You're not going to do that to me, are you? I wouldn't do that. I promise. All right. I'm missing somebody here. Ah, oh, Bell. Bell, you're here, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give people another couple minutes, all right? If you don't mind, ladies and gentlemen. That's okay. Uh, actually, part of this this particular laboratory is, is very very confusing, and uh, I want to make sure that you guys understand what's going on with it. Okay. Basically, oh good, I've got got eight people in. I got two thirds participation. How about that? Wonderful. Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing double replacement reactions to identify the cation. And we're going to be doing single replacement reactions to identify the anion. OK? Legitimately speaking, if I was, if I was in a face-to-face -face laboratory with this, and I, sorry about that, if I'm in a face-to-face -face laboratory with you doing this, I would hand you one test tube with a liquid in it. Now the liquid would contain in it a salt. Now the salt would have both of your unknowns in it because your unknown is a cation that you have to identify and an anion. Put those together, you get a salt. Is this making sense so far, guys? Yes. yes. All right, so we're going to identify the cation by precipitation reaction. The precipitation reaction is nothing more than you get a double replacement reaction, and one of the two compounds you create doesn't dissolve in water. So that's what drives the reaction to go. Because that doesn't dissolve in water, it, uh, the reaction goes. And you can literally see it as a white precipitate that occurs. Now, there, the alkaline earth metals are very, very good at the fact that they all will precipitate with different anions differently. And because of that, we're going to be able to make a chart. We're going to make a chart. And once we make that chart, we're going to be able to discern what the correct cation is. The other half, we're going to be doing single replacement reactions, but not the normal not the normal single displacement that you're used to. Most of the time, you guys have seen single displacement. You've got a metal that's displacing a cation, right? Does everybody know what I'm talking? Have you all had the chem reactions uh, lecture so far? Am I or am I making assumptions? No, yeah, I have had it. You have had it. Has anybody not had the chemical reactions lecture so far? I'm hearing crickets, so I'm going to assume that's correct. Okay, what you guys have had up to this point, tell me if I'm wrong. 
You have been told that if you get a metal with a ionic salt, that's a single displacement, the metal displaces the cation. Is that correct for what you know? Yes. Yes. All right. Now, what we're doing, we're going to be taking a halogen. Now, all the halogens exist as diatomic molecules. So chlorine, fluorine, iodine, uh, bromine, they all exist as Br2, I2, uh, Cl2. Now, when I put that substance in water and then I shake it up with a little bit of an ion in water, what happened, uh, and ionic compound in water, what happens is instead of the neutral compound trying to displace the cation, in this instance, the neutral compound will try and displace the anion. Is this making a little bit of sense, guys? So that's the two bases for our interpretation tonight. And I'm gonna pop up the PowerPoint. Okay, so we are going to do the easiest one, the one that I can explain away in five, five minutes. The one I can explain away in five minutes is the double displacement reaction. Now, what you have to understand is that you are adding known materials to four different substance, four different ionic solutions and these are the cations of the ionic solutions. We try and keep the cations that go along with these the same. So I would have something like sodium sulfate, sodium carbonate, sodium oxalate, sodium iodate, because we wanna make sure that it's not the cation that's causing some sort of strange reaction. If we keep the cation the same, nothing strange is going to happen there. So when I put my unknown neutral metal in there, okay? If I put my unknown, I'm sorry, my, no. If I put my known cation, so I'm going to have a solution with a known cation. In the first instance, this is ah, doctorium. Ah, doctorium, uh, you don't like it, okay. So. This ah, AH is actually a plus two. So when I put ah, these all exist with the same anions so that the anions aren't making any bit of a change. So I put the ah into the solution with the sodium sulfate, I get no precipitation. I put it in to a, another solution with sodium carbonate, I get no precipitation. I put it in with sodium oxalate, I get no precipitation. However, when I put it in with sodium iodate, I get a white precipitate. Ah reacts with IO3 to make ah IO3 that doesn't dissolve in water. Okay, and the way we do this, we generally have a little plastic dish and the little plastic dish will have 12 to 16 depressions in it. So we add equal volumes of the Na sulfate and we add an equal volume of the A chloride. So that we're trying to see if the A reacts with the sulfate. It didn't. We're trying to see if the ah uh, reacts with the carbonate. It didn't. The ah uh, reacts with the oxalate. It didn't. But it did react, make a white precipitate with the iodate. Next, we're going to do GER, which is mean dogium. GER reacts with the sulfate to make a precipitate. GER reacts with the carbonate to make a precipitate. It doesn't react with the oxalate. 
But again, it does react with the iodate to make a precipitate. The UG, disgustium, UG will react with the sulfate. UG will, well, I'm sorry, UG doesn't react with the sulfate. It reacts with the carbonate to make a precipitate. It doesn't react with the oxalate, but it does react with the iodate to make a white precipitate. And guys, you're going to have to look at the videos because the videos are what are going to show you the reactions are. Now, why questionium reacts with sulfate to give a white precipitate? It reacts with all four of them to give white precipitates. So you have to understand, I've got testing solutions. The testing solutions are the things that are on the horizontal axis. They're gonna be the sulfate, carbonate, oxalate, and iodate. When you test them, you're gonna be testing the alkaline earth metals. And you're gonna be testing uh, barium, calcium, strontium, and something else that's escaping me right now. Uh, where's the periodic table when I need it? Magnesium. Okay, you're gonna have magnesium, barium, calcium, and strontium. And you're gonna test the magnesium with sulfate, carbonate, oxalate, and iodate. You're gonna test the calcium with all four of those again. You're gonna test the strontium with all four and the barium with all four. And you're gonna get a chart that looks like this. Now, you're gonna have your unknown. You're gonna put into four wells of the plastic dish, you're gonna put a squirt of the ion that contains sulfate to the second depression, a squirt that contains carbonate, to a third one, a squirt that contains oxalate, and to the fourth one, a squirt that contains iodate. Then into each one of these, you're going to add your unknown. And you're going to see if it precipitates or not. The whole idea is you are trying to match. You're trying to match one of these patterns. In this case, ladies and gentlemen, what is my unknown? if I'm looking at this particular chart. The first one, ah. Uh. The first one, ah, uh, because it has the same reactions. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense? Um, no, what do, you, what do you mean when it says that it has the same like reactions? Like they are- Okay. All right, Veronica, uh, what's happening? I'm adding equal, equal quantities of my testing solutions with my known, okay, v Veronica? I have my compound, AH2+. AH2+, did not precipitate SO4. It did not precipitate CO3. It did not precipitate C2O4 it did precipitate IO3. Do you see that, Veronica? Yes, I understand that. Okay, well now, now when you get to the point where you've tested all of your known samples, now you're gonna test your unknown. And when you test your unknowns, you are going to put the same testing solutions in four different wells, and you're gonna take your unknown and put it into the four wells with the testing solutions. Okay, Veronica? Okay. So my unknown didn't react with sulfate, neither did I. My unknown didn't react with carbonate, neither did I. It didn't react with oxalate, neither did I. It did react with iodate which is what I did. Same pattern of reactions. Now, if I compare, oh, I if I compare the unknown with GER, 
Look, in GER, I got a precipitate when I put it in with sulfate. My unknown didn't react. That's a contradiction. So my unknown couldn't be GER. My unknown didn't react with carbonate, but UG gave me a precipitate. So I know it couldn't be UG. My unknown didn't react with oxalate, but it did with Y. So I know that it couldn't be Y. By process of elimination here, my unknown has to be AH. Does that make sense now, Veronica? Yes, now it makes sense. Okay, guys, have I belabored that point enough? Are we all are we all pretty solid on the precipitation reactions? Kara's bored out of her mind. She wants me to go on, right, Kara? No, I think Kara just wants to eat at this point. I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, in order for me to explain single replacement or single displacement reactions, which is how we're going to identify the anion of our unknown, I have to go in and talk about oxidation reduction reactions. And you kind of understand that by using two mnemonics. Leo goes GER, loss of electrons oxidation. L stands for the Leo, L loss of electrons oxidation, gain of electrons reduction, okay? If you don't like that, use oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. It's a real easy way to know which process you've got, whether you're gaining or losing electrons. You cannot have an oxidation without a reduction because when you oxidize, thus you leave electrons going out there, those electrons have to be gobbled up by something. So when you have an oxidation, you have a subsequent reduction. So if I have a reaction, say I have magnesium reacting with copper sulfate. Okay, I get a reaction out of this. I start to see brown stuff forming. So I know I have a reaction. What happens in a single displacement? The metal will displace the cation. And it has now become ionic. The cation has been, has gained electrons and it goes to being a neutral metal. So ultimately what we have happening in this reaction is what's going on at the bottom. Magnesium is losing two electrons to become Mg plus two. Loss of electrons, magnesium metal is being oxidized. On the other hand, my copper ion is grabbing those electrons. It's gaining electrons to become neutral copper. My copper gaining electrons, it's being reduced. All right, now what we're doing in, what we are doing in this particular experiment, we're gonna have two solutions. One of the solutions is going to be the halide in water. The other solution is going to be the, uh, excuse me. One of the solutions is going to be the halogen. Halogens are the diatomic molecule. One is going to be the halogen in water. The other is going to be the halide, the ion in water. And so what is going to happen is if we have this, my chlorine, because chlorine can't be positive, chlorine is going to look to replace the bromine. Chlorine is going to look to replace the bromine. If it is more active, that will occur. The chlorine will replace the bromine and become Cl minus. The bromine will have grabbed, will have given its electrons to chlorine. And so the bromine now has become neutralized, but it has to exist as Br2. Now, how do we know a reaction happens? The more active compound will be, end up being ionic. 
So if I'm looking at this reaction and I did get a reaction to occur, since the reaction proceeded, I made all the chlorines into chlorides. I made the chlorines into an ionic compound. The active compound will always, always, always end up ionic. If I did this and I got no reaction, that would mean that my ion was more active than my neutral halogen. So there are two rules we're dealing with single replacement reactions. The more active element will always end up ionic. And if the forward reaction goes, the reverse will not. So if I look to do Br2, if I look to add Br2 plus KCl, I get no reaction. Again, if we want to look at this in terms of oxidation and reduction, what is happening in reality? My two Br minuses are losing two electrons. They are being sucked up by, they're sucked into the bromine, or they're losing two electrons. So each one of the bromide ions loses one, two total are lost. The bromine is now neutralized. It wants to be diatomic. On the other hand, the diatomic chlorine gains those electrons. So it splits that diatomic molecule into two atoms and those atoms now will gain one electron each. So the chlorine gains electrons. Gain of electrons, reduction, loss of electrons, oxidation. So when we're determining the halide present. What we're first going to do is we are going to take known materials. We're going to take potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide. And we are going to add them to bromine in water, chlorine in water, iodine in water. When I say chlorine, when I say the element, think to yourself, that's the diatomic neutral molecule. When I end it in IDE, that means I'm dealing with the anion. Cl minus, Br minus, and um, I minus. All right. Now, the whole strategy, we're going to look at this. When we put the halogen, the halogen is the the X2, whatever the halogen is, that would be Br2, Cl2, or I2. Only the halogen gets extracted into the hexane layer. We're going to take the halide, mix it with the halogen in water. Then we're going to add on top of that hexanes. Hexanes does not mix with water. Then we're going to shake it up. Only the hal halogen will extract into hexanes. And when it does, it extracts with a color. So we can tell what species still exists, whether it's going to be the Cl2, the I2, or the Br2. Have I lost you all yet? Nope. Questions, guys? All right, now let's think about this. What's more electronegative, chlorine, bromine, or iodine? You can actually predict the whole, whole reaction. What is going to be more electronegative? Is it bromine? Nope. Chlorine. <clears throat> chlorine. Chlorine. Remember, guys, the closer you get to fluorine, 
Fluorine is the absolute most electronegative element. Then it goes oxygen, and then uh, I think it's a toss up between nitrogen and chlorine. But fluorine is going to be the most electronegative. The closer you get to fluorine, the more electronegative your particular uh, halide is going to be. So chlorine is more electronegative than bromine, which is more electronegative than iodine. Okay. Do, do you think chlorine wants electrons more or less than bromine? More. More. So if I put Cl2, like here, if I put Cl2 in the same water solution as Br minus, which one's going to win the battle to get the electrons? Chlorine. Cl2. Cl2 is going to win the battle. Chlorine will win the battle. And chlorine is more active than bromine. So when we mix Br minus with Cl2, what we get is Cl minus and Br2. But remember, guys, what we're doing is we're shaking this thing up and we're trying to see the color that's in the hexane layer. When we shake this up, because the chlorine has reacted with all the bromine and there's no chlorine left, what we get is only Br2. So the color in the hexane layer should be the bromine color. I'm pausing here to try and let that sink in. Is anybody confused at this point? Can you repeat the last phrase that you say? So you okay. want us? All right, Veronica. If I put Br minus and Cl2 together, do you understand mm -hmm. that Cl is going to get the electrons from Br? Yes. Okay, so all of the Cl2 is used up. All of the Cl was used to make the bromine, to make Br2, right, Veronica? Yeah. So since the only thing that's left is Br2, the Br2 color is going to be in the hexanes. Okay. That didn't sound like a very confident, okay. <laughs> because I thought that, uh, that it was gonna be, like you were explaining, it was gonna be the oxidation or the, the reactant. So I, maybe I got okay. lost. That's the reasoning behind what's happening, Veronica. That's the reasoning. I'm telling you what's happening in the actual experiment now. Oh, okay. What you are doing is you're taking KBR, which supplies the BR minus, and you're mixing that with chlorine water, which is Cl2 water. So in <laughs> actuality, what you're doing is you're mixing BR minus with Cl2. The Cl2 wants those electrons from bromine, it grabs them. So mm -hmm. all of this chlorine, all the Cl2 is now converted to Cl minus. The Cl minus doesn't go into the hexane. The only thing that's going into the hexanes is the Br2. So what we should expect in the hexane layer is the Br2 color. Okay. All right, Brian. <coughs> Brian? Muted, you're muted, Brian. There we I go. Got it. Okay. Good. Looking between chlorine and iodine. Between chlorine and iodine, do we expect a reaction? Is chlorine more electronegative than iodine? No, it's not. Is it closer to fluorine than iodine is? Chlorine's clo chlorine is closer. So is it more electronegative? Yeah. If it's more electronegative, do you think it's going to want the electrons more than iodine will? Yes. So if I mix Cl minus with I2, are you expecting a reaction? Yes. Brian, chlorine's already negative. Is iodine strong enough to pull those electrons away from chlorine? 
Brian, Hello? Brian, you and I, you and I are, I'm a drug dealer. I'm a cartel leader, right? I have a kilo of cocaine. I have a kilo of cocaine that I have already smuggled into the country. Okay. Okay. All right. All You're right. my flunky, Brian. You're my flunky. Are you going to be able to take that kilo of cocaine away from me? No. I'm stronger than you. I'm going to keep that <laughs> cocaine. Chlorine is stronger than iodine. Chlorine is going to keep its electrons. Okay? So if chlorine keeps its electrons, do we get a reaction? No. Chlorine stays ionic. It is the more active element. It stays ionic. So we don't get a reaction. All right. If we don't get a reaction, what is the color that's going to be? What causes the color that happens in the hexanes? The I2. Because the halogen is the one that gets extracted. I have no Cl2 because I didn't get a reaction. I only have I2 because it didn't react. So I should get the I2 color in my hexanes. Is this kind of sinking into you guys? Give me questions yeah. here, guys. Yes, it's kind of sucking in now. It helped right. the example that you did. You kind of help out. <laughs> All right. Because what I have to do in a few minutes, I've explained it forward wise, okay? But when you make your observations, you got to go backwards because instead of predicting what color should be there, you're going to see the color and you got to predict why that color is there. Okay, we have three compounds. We have S2, asinine, a foolish element. We have BF2, B fine, a very meaty element. And we have AN2, alienine, a foreign element. Come on, guys. It took me a long time to come up with these names. Very original. <laughs> okay. If I put asinine into water and I put hexanes over top of it, I get a chartreuse color. Ladies, would you please, would you please educate the male members of this audience? Chartreuse color is really what color? No idea. No idea? Which color? Chartreuse. Oh my God. Have I gotten a, ah. Uh, Never mind. I will use the card. I speak Spanish. I don't know that. <laughs> Chartreuse is kind of a purple color. Okay. How about carnation? What color is carnation? Like the milk or the flower? Not the milk. The flower. No. <laughs> Come on. You're going to go. You're in a wedding. You're picking out bridesmaids dresses and you want carnation. You're going to go for milk? Pink? It's yellow. Carnation is yellow? Dear God, Isn't I worked, it white? I worked in Macy's. I worked in Macy's for five years. I worked in the men's department, and I had to pick out ties for all these brides that wanted to make, they wanted to match their brides made dresses with a tie of the groomsmen. And it took me 10 years to find the color. Well, it explains why you, why you know what the color chartreuse is because I sure don't. Ah. Oh, that was a color. Yes, chartreuse is a color. It's kind of a purple, dear God. Watch it. To pick the hard colors, though. Yeah, it's because ah, never mind. Is this better for you? Yeah. We have purple, green, <laughs> and pink. Is that better for you? Thank you. 
See if I try and entertain you all anymore. So, Thanks. I, I put asinine into water and I put hexanes on top. I shake it up, I'm gonna get a purple color. I do the same thing with bee fine. I take bee fine, put it in water, put hexanes on it, shake it up. I get a green color in the hexanes. Alienine, I extract it into the hexanes. I get a pink color. Okay. So this is what happens if I take just the element and extract it into hexanes. These are the three colors I get. You got to accept that, guys. Understand that only AS2, BF2, and AN2 give the colors. AS minus, BF minus, and AN minus do not give colors. Understand the more active element is going to end up ionic, whether it stays in the ionic form or whether it goes from neutral to ionic. In other words, if it stays ionic, no reaction occurred. If it goes from neutral to ionic, a reaction occurs. The more active element is ionic. We're going to be mixing the ion, the halide, with the neutral compound, the halogen, to see which one is more active. I mix AN minus with BF2, and I get a green color. What species does this indicate? There was a reaction. Don't think about reaction. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me what species, what species you're detecting in the hexanes. The BF2. Okay, we're detecting BF2. Does everybody see that? Yep. Did I have a reaction? Yes. Did I have a reaction? No. I started with BF2. BF2's color is green. If I would have had a reaction, I would have gotten AN2. I would have gotten a pink color had I had a reaction. Okay. Do we see that now, guys? Yes. So... I mix AN minus with BF2, I get green. So what species does the green indicate, guys? Come on, say it again. BF. BF2. So which element is more active? BF2. No, AN negative. Why, Veronica? Because it's, it has um, a stronger electronegativity. That's the true reason. But why do you know it has a stronger electronegativity? Due to the minus? No reaction. Because um, there's no reaction. Oh, my God. <laughs> you didn't okay. get a reaction. You didn't get a reaction between A and minus and BF2. You know you didn't get a reaction because you've got a green color and green indicates BF2. So if you didn't get a reaction, then BF2 was not strong enough to pull the electrons off AN. So AN minus is the more active. Did everybody follow that logic? Yes. Anybody confused? So right now, I know AN is more active than BF2. Okay? Now, I get, God, I shouldn't have done this. I mix BF minus with AS2. And I get a green color. What color does green indicate? BF2. 
So did I have a reaction? Yes. How do you know that, Veronica? Because BF was stronger, so the way it took the electrons from AS and it changed the color. Well, your observations tell you that you produced BF2. Okay, Veronica? Yes. Since your observations indicated that you produced BF2, then the BF minus must have given up its electrons to create BF2. So which element is more active? BF? If BF minus were more active, wouldn't it have kept its electrons and stayed ionic? So it will be AS because. AS gave, I'm sorry, sucked up the electrons from BF so that it became negative. When okay. it became negative, it took the electrons away from BF which made BF2, which created the green color. Okay. Okay, somebody other than Veronica, I need you all, I need to make sure that you're all understanding this. So the color that we get is from the weaker element? No, you can't, you cannot go with that, Aisa. You can't go with that. The color indicates which was which was the uh, the, the stronger. Um... No, no, don't go stronger yet. Okay, the color indicates which of the three compounds is extracted into hexanes. Okay, Aisa. Okay. All right. The green color indicated that I had BF two. Okay, Aisa? Yes. Did I originally have BF2? No. So did I get a reaction? Yes. I got a reaction, all right? So I have BF2. That means if I had BF2, now we gotta ask the, the next question. To make BF2, BF has to give up its electrons to AS, which means AS is strong enough to pull those electrons away from BF. If that happens, then AS is more active than BF. Okay, I get it now. All right, right now, right now you guys can tell me, this reaction, you said that AN, no, wait, wait, never mind. You said AN was stronger. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm losing it here. No reaction happened, so BF is stronger than AN. Do you all see that? This is the first reaction we did. We ended up green. That meant yeah. we still have BF2. That meant no reaction. If there's no reaction, AN is stronger than BF2. Yeah. AN is more active. Okay. So we got in this one. Okay. That makes sense to you guys. Yep. So in this one. We got a reaction. So we know that AS is stronger than BF. So do we know which one from these two? We have three compounds. At this point, do we know which one is the least active? AN minus is stronger than BF and AS is stronger than BF. Which is the least active? Come on, guys. AS is stronger than BF. 
and AN is stronger than BF2. Which one's the weakest? BF2. BF2 is the weakest from those first two. But we have to do a third reaction to figure out the difference, which one's stronger between AN and AS. So what we're going to do is we're going to put AN minus and AS2. And we get a carnation color, a uh, pink color. What species does pink indicate? AN2. Somebody has been paying attention or knows their colors. <laughs> Okay, so we mix these two together and we get pink. Did we have a reaction? No. Yes. Yes, we did. Maybe. I got no and yes. How about a maybe? No. Come on. If you, if you, if you said an answer, who said yes, we have a reaction? I did. Okay. The person that just said I did. Who was that? Tori. Tori. Okay. Why did you say we have a reaction? Because the AN ended up by itself. What gives the pink color? The AN. AN2. Okay. Would you have had a pink color to begin with? No. And you made one. Correct. So therefore, AN2 was produced. Did we have a reaction? Yes. Sorry. We had a reaction. Now, what is more active, AS or AN? AN. Again, all right. I made AN, I made AN2, right? Sorry? Yeah. Yes. So if I made AN2, what became ionic? The AS is more active. The AS is more active than the AN. So if I'm doing an activity series between those three elements, AS is more active than AN, which is more active than BF. Okay. All right. Now we are going to do the same thing that we did with the precipitation reaction. Only what we are doing with this one is we are taking, we're taking much more of this than we have of this. There's a reason for that. Much more of the, we're going to add the halide to the halogen. Okay. And based upon the color, based upon the color, do I have time to do this? Give me a second on this, okay? You want it to be fancy with colors. Yeah, that was my fault. I thought I was going to impress you. I think we learned them, though. <laughs> you think so? I think you've been around too many bridesmaids in your life to be knowing these <laughs> colors. Always a bridesmaid, never a... Okay, Does it make you deal. tired of dealing with weddings and hearing the word wedding now? <laughs> uh, guys, ladies, this is just a piece of advice from somebody that worked at a men's shop for a long time. You are never, ever, ever going to match the tie exactly. So what you want to do is you want to get a highlight in the tie to kind of to get the highlight in the tie as close as you can 
to match the dresses. Then you'll be perfect. All right. We're going to leave them this colors because I don't have time to mess with this. All right. What he did when he's going through this, he doesn't add BF minus to BF2. He doesn't add AS minus to AS2. He doesn't add AN minus to AN2. He doesn't do that. The reason he doesn't do that is you're not going to get a reaction, right? You're not going to get a reaction. The reason I do it, if you take F minus is not going to change in anything because the only thing, if we put it with F2, the only thing it could change into is F2 and it's already F2. So we can't have a reaction between BF minus and BF2, AS minus and AS2, and AN minus and AN2. Do you all believe that, guys? You all yes. believe that? The reason I do it is because when you have the unknown, you don't know what you have. So you're going to put it in all three anyway, right? That's the reason I do this. Now, the basic experiment. You're going to take the halide in water and you're going to mix it with the halogen in water. You're going to shake them up. You're going to get them to react. Then you're going to put hexane on top. And all you're going to do is you're going to view the color of the hexane layer. Are we good with that, guys? Do we kind of understand what's happening with the actual experiment? So I'm going to take three different test tubes. And into the first test tube, I'm going to put BF2. I'm going to put the second AS2 in water. And to the third, I'm going to put AN2 in water. To each of those, I'm going to add my BF minus. I'm adding my BF minus. I'm shaking them up. Then on top of that, I am adding hexanes. And whatever is in the hexane layer is going to be what, what thing I call it as. It's either going to be BF2, AS2, or AN2. Now, when I mix BF minus with BF2, the only thing I'm going to, the only thing I can possibly generate is F2. This does not make sense, guys. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, it is BF. Never mind. Don't mind me. Okay. If I mix BF minus with BF2, the only thing that could possibly be generated is BF2. So when I look at the hexane layer, whatever color I see in the hexane layer from mixing those two is going to be from the BF2. Do you understand that? When I mix AS minus with AS2, the only thing that can cause the color in the hexane layer is AS2, because I'm not getting any reactions. I mix AN minus with AN2, I'm getting a color. The color is of the AN2. Now, I mix my unknown with each one of these things. BF2, AS2, and AN2. I get colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match the colors I get in my unknown to the colors of one of these three compounds. Which one is it? AS minus. AS minus. So if I was doing my unknowns and writing in my results section, I would be writing in, what was it? Ah? 
I would be writing for my cation ah AH2 plus. And for my anion, I would be writing in AS minus. Do you all see how I came up with it being AS minus? Are we good with that? Do we understand that, guys? If you don't have it, if you're not, if you don't have this, then this is the only time you're going to get a chance to ask. So when we have the color, we have the reaction, which is what we're going to change in the other chart, right? Because you say you were like, that one was like a given. Okay. Right, no? <laughs> okay, so if I'm looking at this, these three, these three, are the actual colors of, this one's the color of BF2 in hexanes. This is the color of AS2 in hexanes. This is the color of AN2 in hexanes. Okay, Veronica? Yes. The major portion of this is identifying which one it is. And the way you do that is you try and match the colors. You know that the unknown can't be A minus, AN minus, because when you put it in with AS2, AN minus caused a pink color. The unknown gave a chartreuse. Do you understand that, Veronica? Yes. All right. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match the three colors that appear with the three colors that are in my unknown. Okay. All right. Now, if we want to figure out what's happening, these three colors are the actual colors. This is the color of BF2 because I just mixed BF minus with it. This is the color of AS2 because I just mixed AS minus with it. And this is the color of AN2 because I just mixed AN minus with it. So what this is saying, when I mix AS minus with AN2, I'm getting the AN2 color. So I didn't get a reaction. Okay. When I am mixing the AS minus with BF2, I'm getting the BF2 color. So again, I didn't get a reaction. When I'm missing, mixing AS minus with AS2, I'm getting the AS2 color. Basically, there's no reaction because I'm missing, mixing S, AS minus with AS2. Let's look at BF. BF minus BF2, there's no reaction because I'm mixing BF minus with BF2. Same substances. Okay, I'm mixing BF minus with AS2 and I got the BF2 color. So I must have had a reaction. Again, I mix BF2 with AN2, I get the BF2 color. So that must mean that I have a reaction. AN minus mixed with BF2, I get the BF2 color, no reaction. AN minus with AS2, I get the carnation color. I did get a reaction. AN minus with AN2, I got carnation. No reaction. All right, guys. All right. Very simple report. It's going to take you no time to write the report. The report's going to consist of about the actual results is going to consist of maybe four or five questions. First question, did you determine the unknown, the uh, unknown cation? And you're going to say, yes, it is such and such. The second, the second question is going to ask you to describe how you determined your answer. I want specific results. For example, my unknown precipitated with CO3, IO3, 
and did not precip precipitate with SO3 or oxalate. This matched my known, I gotta see what it was. It reacted with CO3 and it reacted with this, but didn't react with the other two. It must be such and such. My unknown halogen extracted purple in the hexanes when treated with all three of these colors. This matched my known, whatever the known was. That's not a lot to ask, guys. That's all I need from you. But I need, to, I need you to mention what the specific reactions were and what your observations were. Does that un, is that understood? If you don't give me those specific reactions, you're not gonna you're gonna get half of the points. And literally speaking, it goes like um, 20, 30, 20, 30. You'd be missing like 15 points from that. So I want the specific reactions done in the in the question it asks how you determined your answer. Do I have a do I have an understanding on that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. It's not going to take that much. Two sentences out of it. This would work. Something like this would work. All right. How I see this. When I mix, be it, the, this is the, these are the real answers. Okay, when I mix Br minus with Br2, I get an orange color. When I mix Cl minus with Cl2, I get no color to a very, very light yellow, a straw color. When I mix I minus with I2, I get a pink purple color. So orange is the color for Br2 in hexanes. No color to straw is the color of Cl2. Pink purple. And the reason I call it pink purple, the more concentrated you get this, it's going to look purple. The less concentrated you get it, it's going to look pink. Pink or purple is going to be the answer for I minus or I2. I have what I would call the reactions for all of these. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look at, look at the videos. You're gonna find that the videos don't match up very well. And basically you get confused. So I've given you the halide observations. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I've been doing this for about an hour now. Are there any questions? In, in the, in the post lab guys, that's where you're gonna probably lose the most points on this particular experiment. And I think my wife is already starting the pork tenderloin. All right. Okay. All right. Ah, oh, dear God. Do you see the trend here? F2, it melts at 85. Cl2 melts at 239. Br2, 3.30. As we're going down the periodic table, what's happening to the melting point? It's increasing. It's increasing. Okay, so are you, at nine is below iodine. 
Okay. What would you predict the molecular formula of elemental astatine? Astatine. If fluorine is F2, chlorine is Cl2, Br is Br2, and iodine is I2, what would you expect the molecular formula for astatine be? Come on, guys. Think. What is the trend here? Would Somebody be, come up with an answer. Would it be AT2 at a gas? Okay, AT2. All the and other halogens are diatomic. Why wouldn't acetone? Right? No. Do you know, do you know what, okay, what state would you think it is? Would you think it's going to melt higher or lower than 457? I'm not gonna answer this question. I'm just posing a legitimate question. Do you think acetone is gonna melt Higher or lower? Higher. I'm not going to say you're right or wrong. Now, you have to realize it's asking room temperature. What's room temperature in Kelvin? Two seventy-five. No, not quite. Two ninety-eight. Room temperature is about 25 Celsius. So it's going to be 298. So you got to tell me what the formula is. And you got to tell me, crap, there it is, good. You got to tell me what state of matter it is. Now, you know all that stuff I gave you about periwinkle and everything like that. The reason I went through that the reason I went through that is because of these post lab questions. You're given a, you are given a reaction. They're telling what happens with that reaction. The final question between B and C, which one is more active? Same question with three, four, and three and four. Then what you're asked to do is what we exactly did in the exercise. We ranked the three as opposed to whether they are, which one's the least active and which one's the most active. Remember, one is the least active, three is the most active. Okay, this one, what they're trying to do here is they are trying to, to get you to develop a procedure which will identify the salt that's present in your unknown, just like you are doing in the lab today. And it's giving you four different examples. Like I said, this post lab is not easy. It's going to be probably the hardest post lab you do this semester. You got to think it through. Don't think you can do this in like five minutes because, well, you can do it in five minutes. I just wouldn't trust the grade that you got. And that's really, guys, all I got. Really and truly, the results section is not that hard. It is, it's almost exactly what I described it as. 
Now, do you have any questions or are we going to eat, Kara? Well, I want to eat whatever your wife's making now. Uh, I don't know what she marinated the pork tenderloin in, but apparently we're having pesto, pasta, and she's uh, probably put the asparagus with a little bit of sesame oil on the grill. Perfect. I'm Italian. Half of that sounds perfect. I'm in for free dinner. Let me know when I can come over. I'll just come in, eat, and I'll just leave. You won't even hear from me. Two blocks south of the Chataway. Come on over. <laughs> Guys, anything else? If you have questions, you know my phone number. Okay? Just don't... Okay, just to be honest with you, on, okay, my surgery is going to be a week from tonight. Okay, you're off next week, right? Yeah, I was going to ask you, are we off for yeah. break next week? Next week is break, okay. I, as a matter of fact, I think I put it in your announcement. I can tell you that right off the bat, whether I did or not. Uh you don't have to hand in anything next week. So we have two weeks to turn this on. Okay. What was due this week was the titration of the acid post lab, pre lab for this one, and a notebook for the antacid. Two weeks from now is when you have to turn in the other things. Okay. Okay. If you have any questions, just look at the announcements. That's generally where I put what you have to. Okay, Brian? Okay. If we have questions in the lab, can we send you an email during spring break or are you know? Veronica, you can you can try to email me next Wednesday. <laughs> but next Wednesday, I am going to be uh, in the recovery room in Moffitt. Okay? Okay. <laughs> So, as I said, you can call, you can try and email me. You can try and email me on Thursday. Don't expect a response on Thursday either. Okay. All right. Give me until the weekend. Give me until Sunday. All right, Veronica. All right. Sounds good. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Good luck with it. Take care. I will see you in two weeks. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you, Professor. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, Veronica? Yeah. Okay. Are you do you need to uh, talk with me? No, no. no. I'm okay. My Sometimes people uh, stick around because they want to talk to me privately after everybody has left. Oh, no, uh, it's just my sister came into the room and I was looking at her. So right. I didn't. No that, problem. Yeah. Okay. All right, you take care. I'll see you in two weeks. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.